Ned's nickname of the Quiet Wolf is not something he's referred to throughout the series. It's the name Mira Reed uses to describe him when telling Brand's story about how her father, Helen Reed, met Ned. So it's not clear if others also called him this name or just what his close friend Helen Reed did. Ned's always been honorable and honest, but he's also kept a lot of his life private. It was old Nan that told Bran all of his favorite stories. Ned was never much of a storyteller. Bran learned a lot about his father's past through his travels with Mira and Jojen Reed. At the young age of eight, Ned was sent to the Vale to be fostered by John Arryn alongside Robert Baratheon. Building alliances is normal for more of the southern houses, but the north is fairly isolated from the rest of the other kingdoms. Possibly for the first time, a northern lord was trying to get closer with southern rulers. In House Arryn's home of the Eyrie, Ned and Robert were raised like brothers and saw John as a second father. While a teenager, Robert would lose both of his parents to a shipwreck, so it was nice to have someone there to raise him and teach him how to be a ruler. And John Aaron just happened to have trouble having children. Ned's situation was very different. We don't know much about his mother, Lyara Stark, but his father, Rickard Stark, was alive at this point in the story. Ned was the second-born son of Rickard after his older brother, Brandon. So how Stark could afford to send him away? Ned and Robert had some contrasting personalities, as well as Ned and his older brother, Brandon. So in comparison to these two, Ned would definitely seem like a quiet person. Both Robert and Brandon were larger and stronger men who loved to fight. They were also quick to anger, fearless, and would act irrationally. This hot-blooded nature is something commonly passed down in the Stark's bloodline. Ned's younger sister Lyanna inherited it, and even Arya has it. It's something called the wolf's blood. The wolf theme is something found a lot in this family. The Stark sigil is a dire wolf, and their ancestors with the nickname of the Laughing Wolf and the Hungry Wolf. Brandon was the wild wolf, and Lyanna was the she-wolf. Ned believes it was their wolf blood that led to his two siblings' deaths. We learn a lot about their personalities in the story of the tourney at Harrenhal. It was said to be one of the greatest tourneys in this story's history, with prizes so large that the majority of lords and knights were all drawn in. All of House Stark was in attendance. The book even hints that Lyanna was wild enough to enter the tourney's joust as a mystery knight, hiding her identity. Howland Reed was bullied for a small size by three young squires, so the mystery knight challenged and defeated the knights who were responsible for the squire bullies. Instead of taking their armor and horses, she requested they discipline their squires instead. The Mad King was a paranoid man, so someone this skilled concealing their identity worried him. He wanted the mystery knight unmasked, but she was never found. Lyanna always loved riding and fighting, but her father never allowed it. She was meant to be Robert Baratheon's lady, not a fighter. By the end of the tourney, it was Prince Rhaegar to win the jousts. And as per tradition, he was to name someone as the Queen of Love and Beauty. Being married to Elia Martell for years, it was expected that he would name his wife. But instead, it was Lyanna Stark he chose. Robert Baratheon, the man she was betrothed to, laughed it off, but he was clearly bothered by it. Brandon didn't hide his anger, since he saw this as an insult to his younger sister. He had to be restrained. Rhaegar was not only a skilled fighter, he also knew how to play the harp. During a feast, he was able to make Lyanna tear up with his music. When Benjen Stark made fun of his older sister, she poured her wine on the young pup. This seems like a hint that Lyanna shared some kind of affection towards Rhaegar. Many of the men had their eyes set on Ashara Dane, and one of these lords was Ned. She was dancing with a few other notable characters like Barristan Selmy, Oberyn Martell, and John Cunnington. Many still believe Ned fell in love with Ashara while in Harrenhal, but he was the quiet wolf that couldn't approach her. It was his older brother Brandon that talked to her so she would dance with Ned. Rickard would continue his plans to build relationships with the more powerful southern houses. He had Brandon betrothed to Catelyn of House Tully. Peter Baelish, who grew up with the Tullys, had always been in love with Catelyn, so he challenged Brandon to a duel for her hand. Peter was a smaller man, his nickname of Littlefinger kind of says it all, so he didn't stand a chance against Brandon. Catelyn had to beg her betrothed not to kill Peter. This all took place in the Tully's home of River Run while awaiting the wedding. One year after the tourney at Harrenhal, Lyanna would disappear when Rhaegar rode through the Riverlands. Brandon immediately rode to King's Landing with a small group of his bannermen for justice. The paranoid Mad King imprisoned them all for treason and called their fathers down to answer for their son's actions. Rickard demanded a trial by combat, and the Mad King chose fire as his champion. Rickard was burned alive in his armor, while Brandon was forced to watch with a noose around his neck and a sword just out of reach so he would strangle himself to death. The Mad King wasn't done, however. He ordered John Arryn to send the heads of his two wards, Robert and Ned, out of fear for a possible rebellion. John, of course, would never have the boys he saw his sons killed, so they rose together in rebellion. Should bring the Riverlands to their side, there was a double marriage with Ned marrying Cat and John Arryn marrying Lysa. Ned was now the Lord of Winterfell and the leader of the North's army. Together, they all fought and won the war. The Mad King and Rhaegar were dead, but Ned still didn't have his younger sister, Lyanna. 
They heard she was being held in a place called the Tower of Joy in Dorne. So Ned, with six of his companions, including Helen Reed, went to rescue his sister. In front of the tower, they found three Kingsguard members standing guard. Lord Commander Gerald Hightower, Oswald Went, and Arthur Dean. Gerald Hightower was an older man, but Arthur Dean was one of, if not the most skilled and deadliest fighter in the Seven Kingdoms. The only two to survive the fight were Ned and Helen Reed. When Ned found his sister inside the tower, she was in a bed full of blood and at death's door. In her final moments, she asked Ned to promise her something that's still a mystery in the books. But we all know what this promise was in the show. Whatever this promise will turn out to be in the books, which will very likely be the same as it is in the show, Ned kept the details of the Tower of Joy a secret. He didn't even tell the woman he would fall deeply in love with, Cat, or even Jon Snow. This really adds more to his nickname of the Quiet Wolf. Ned may have been quiet, but he was still a wolf. He wouldn't stand for any rumors about the mother of the child he was claimed to be his bastard. He only said the mother was a woman named Wyla from Dorne, but would never talk about her. Yours was, uh, Alina? No, you told me once. Uh, Meryl? Your bastard's mother. Wyla. That's it. She must have been a rare wench to make Lord Eddard Stark forget his honor. He never told me what she looked like. No, will I? But many believed John's true mother to be a Shara Dane. Ned would not speak of the mother, not so much as a word. But a castle has no secrets, and Callan heard her maids repeating tales that they heard from the lips of her husband's soldiers. They whispered of Sir Arthur Dane, the Sword of the Morning, deadliest of the seven knights of Ares' Kingsguard, and of how their young lord had slain him in single combat. And they told how afterward Ned had carried Sir Arthur Dane's sword back to the beautiful young sister who awaited him in a castle called Starfall on the shores of the Summer Sea. The Lady of Shara Dane, tall and fair with haunting violet eyes. It had taken her a fortnight to marshal her courage, but finally in bed one night, Catelyn had asked her husband the truth of it, asked him to his face. That was the only time in all their years that Ned had ever frightened her. Never ask me about John, he said, cold as ice. He is my blood, and that is all you need to know. And now I will learn where you heard that name, my lady. She had pledged to obey, she told him. And from that day on, the whispering had stopped, and the Shara Dane's name was never heard at Winterfell again. It's true that out of respect for Arthur Dane, he returned his family's famous sword, Dawn, back to his house of Starfall and Dorne. Dawn was priceless, made by House Dane's founder using a meteorite thousands of years ago. But Ashara Dane would jump from one of the castle's towers, killing herself soon after for an unknown reason, and her body was never found, which adds more to this mystery. Not only did Ned not share any ill will towards Arthur Dane, but it also seems like he didn't hate Rhaegar. Lyanna and Rhaegar falling in love makes a lot more sense after Ned's comments about Lyanna's wolf blood leading to an early death. If she did what was expected of her and didn't rebel against her father, she would have married Robert Baratheon and not run away with Rhaegar. But it's not like she could have known how serious the consequences were going to be. The aftermath of Robert's rebellion really damaged Ned's and Robert's relationship, who were like brothers prior. Rhaegar's two very young children were killed on the orders by Tywin Lannister to prevent a future rebellion. Robert was fined by these actions, but Ned was disgusted. They wouldn't see each other again for six years when Balon Greyjoy crowned himself king of the Iron Islands and attacked and rebelled against the Seven Kingdoms. They fought together again, easily putting down the end to the hopeless rebellion. All of Balon's sons except for Theon died fighting, so the young Theon was taken by Ned to be raised as a ward to ensure peace. Ned wanted to raise him like a son, but Theon only saw his cold side, which many others also saw from Ned. His last notable act before the start of Game of Thrones was a sentence on Jorah Mormont. Jorah became the lord of Bear Island in the north when his father left to join the Night's Watch, but he was quickly growing poor from buying luxurious gifts for his wife. When Jorah caught some poachers on his island, he foolishly decided to sell them into slavery to make some money. He got caught and was sentenced to death by Ned. Slavery may be the norm in Essos, but in Westeros it's a serious crime. The Honorable Ned always believes the man who passes the sentence should swing the sword, but Jorah was long gone by the time he sailed to Bear Island. In the name of Robert of the House Baratheon, the first of his name. Don't look away. King of the Andals and the first... Father man. will know if you do. Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm. I, Eddard, the House Stark, Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North, sentence you to die. His sense of honor got him killed. The Quiet Wolf was starting to make some noise in King's Landing, which brought way too much attention to himself. The Stark children have also been given some wolf nicknames to mask their family's theme. Rob was the young wolf, Arya the night wolf, and Bran the winged wolf. Jon Snow may not be a Stark, but he has been called the white wolf. All pretty badass names if you ask me. I do want to make a couple more of these character profile type videos in the new future, so you can look up for some of those. 
Hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.